When kids go to school, they are separated from their families for seven or eight hours a day, five days per week. Some kids go to a latchkey type program and might be gone for 11 hours per day. Most people know many families who need to race through every day, left with the scraps of time left over from the school schedule, racing through a morning routine to get to school or the bus stop and having a brief night together of maybe just a few hours. These few hours might be filled with dinner, homework, and getting ready for an early bedtime so they can be sure to get up in the morning. This leaves families with just the weekend to spend together, which can be filled with organized sports and dad going golfing anyway. I've seen families like this. The children place a massive burden on their schedule, and they barely get to see them. I wondered why they bothered having children in the first place. School isolates children from their families and can cripple the relationship children have with their parents and siblings. Children who do not go to school can experience richer family interactions more frequently and on a daily basis. And it's good for parents. Can you imagine anyone on their deathbed wishing they had missed the majority of time they could have spent with their kids when they were growing up? I can't. Yeah. um, I also remember from my childhood, you know, I mean, there was me and two younger brothers and we all went to school. Mm -hmm. Uh, My dad sometimes worked like, you know, 60, 70 hours a week. So there was actually, and this is kind of overlooked, uh, there was a lot of pressure uh, to have a good time on the weekend, right? Quality time was almost (laughs) impossible because we had to, like, there was all this tension around, are we going to be able to maximize the enjoyment of leisure time? You know, I, and, and I, I think, you know, part of that was, was on my dad, you know, it was like he would plan these things and he would, you know, take us to Boston to Red Sox games and all that stuff. And like, if something went wrong, it would just be like, well, shit, you know, this mm-hmm. is the only chance we have for the next five or six days. So we're going to fight or we're going to, resist you know it was i just saw how important that quality time was to him and i don't think he knew another way to live his life you know to to work less to sacrifice maybe that part more or to balance better yeah. so it it seemed like there was like this huge pressure uh on whatever leisure time we had and yeah it's it's a, it's like a lose lose situation right it's bad for the kids bad for the adults Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think this whole school setting uh, creates a tremendous amount of stress in families generally, right? You talk about the strain that it puts on parent-child relationships, but every day I remember being woken up by my mother saying, you got to get up, you got to get up. That that was how our day (laughs) started five days a week, you know? It's so bad. It's so bad. And it builds resentment. Yeah. Go ahead. And then even, you know, a parent who is, uh, this is kind of a digression, a parent who's considered uh, active in their their kid's education usually means they're um, harping on them for grades, you know, or nagging them to do their homework. Yeah. So even the day-to-day experience, right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's you know, your, the mother uh, screaming at the kid to get up, hurry up, you know, comb your hair, uh, you know, eat the cereal, get on the bus. And then the whole time home, you know, it's like, uh, especially if they go to the latch key or whatever. Uh, or we have the super fun home- homework bus, which is uh, another service uh, parents around here use to make sure their kids don't get home until six o'clock. What is that? What is the homework bus? That sounds awful. Yeah, it's it's a super cool homework bus. <laughs> yeah, no, it does. Uh, it's a it's a place where after school the kids go and they do their homework. Um, okay, they're not actually doing they, it on a bus. Yeah, I'm not sure why it's called the bus. I think because they they. Um, they get bussed over or something. Okay. Because um, I would rename it the motion sickness bus if people yeah. were forced to like sit there and look down and write while something was driving them around. But then if you, you know, if you, the kids have to, kids in my neighborhood all have to get up at 530 in the morning to make the bus. So that means they pretty much have to go to bed, you know, by eight uh, yeah. if they want any chance of getting some sleep. So that gives families, you know, precisely uh, 120 minutes together during the evening um, at which point they have to prepare a meal uh, and eat it and maybe uh, also do some homework. Yeah. Um, so, so 
you know, it's almost impossible to have a joyous uh, or joyful time with your kids like that. And then, as you said, the weekend or vacation uh, becomes a, a mad dash to pack in all that family time. Yeah. Yeah. And that and, that family time is high quality. Yeah, it can't be it can't be passive. Right. It can't. Um, it, it, it's an amazing it was an amazing luxury, actually, when we took our kids out of school to not have to pack in um, the whole family time in the weekend, uh, yeah. you know, because we eat every meal together. Um, you know, we're around each other all day. And uh, that way, you know, if someone wants to be alone uh, on Saturday, they, they can do that. Um, you know, this would almost be doing this call today would almost be criminal if uh, I hadn't, you know, already spent, you know, the, the weeks upon weeks with my kids. Sure, sure. Yeah, I, I think in uh, part of my uh, the, the, the talking about the quality of family time is, you know, I had two younger brothers. We were all within five years of each other. And we were little and, you know, it'd be the weekend. We'd get bored. And I guess we would just kind of like quietly uh, or there's unspoken agreement like, hey, you know, it would be fun if we fought with each other. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and that's what we would do. And, uh, you know, that was... Uh, Certainly, uh, taking away from the quality of a uh, of family time. I wanted to add one more uh, short piece uh, that I found. Uh, it's from a website called Broadview, and it's called "Student Stress Can Strain Parent Student Relationships." I think student stress, right? Parents are plenty stressed, but um, the stress created by school, school being this wedge in the family, parents aren't helping, parents aren't usually being temp uh, terribly empathetic. Um, I didn't feel like I was getting a lot of empathy during my wake-up routines or during my uh, homework routines uh, from my parents. So, you know, they want to be, parents want to be good parents. They don't want underachieving kids. They don't want kids falling behind other kids in the neighborhood, having not so great college opportunities. So they're stressing themselves out. And that stress is translating to kids very easily, uh, especially uh, high school students. They're getting plenty of stress from society and school as well. Uh, so I just want to read this really quickly. Sophomore okay. Katie Burke arrives home after Pilates class with math homework, an English essay, history notes, and symposium due the next day, but only wants to finish it all and go to sleep rather than telling her parents about her day. This, uh, the reason why I picked this, by the way, is it really reminded me of the tutoring that I used to do with these really uh, rich overachievers in uh, uh, the greater Boston area. A full day at school followed by lots of homework when arriving home can put teens under stress, causing relationships with parents to become strained. Quote, the way teenagers grow quickly with hormones and their intellectual capacity expanding and seeing things in a particular way clashes with parents certain worries and concerns with safety, says family psychologist Stacy Schuster. Stress can set off a series of chemical reactions, which release hormones that are designed to try and suppress these reactions. Quote, I am especially snappy at my parents during the week because I do not get any sleep, said sophomore Izzy Holland. They constantly ask me to do my chores when all I really want to do is focus on my homework. I calm down by taking a break uh, and by reading a book that's not related to school. I also separate myself from my parents or else I know I will snap. Teens who want to preserve a sense of privacy use various methods to prevent parents from seeing what they are doing on the internet. 33% of teens clear their browser history and 44% of parents say they worry about their teen's safety when they are online, according to Harris Interactive McAfee, which I'm guessing is some kind of survey. Quote, I think mm -hmm. there's a lot more exposure through the web and the internet, said Schuster. There's so much more exposure to every situation. Previous generations were more sheltered to things like that. Knowing about the world makes parents not be the final authority, unquote. Huh. Now, that's, that's an interesting one, and that's something that I, I talked about very early on School Sucks, is that most people didn't ever, they lived their entire lives, you know, we're talking about almost everybody who has existed went through this inquisitive period or this introspective period or even this rebellious period without any knowledge that there could be a support system for what they were going through, you know, and had to keep 
all of these questions or all of these frustrations inside. And now yeah, yeah. there's yeah. basically a way to blurt all of that into the world and build this kind of um, spontaneous support system. Like YouTube comes to mind. You know, these high school kids and even middle school kids, they just have YouTube channels where they get on there and vent about what's going on in school or with their friends or at home. And other people see it. They have hundreds of thousands of views. You know, that was just uh, that experience and that um, outlet. There was nowhere for any of that to go when I was that age or when you were that age. And everybody who came before us, you know, like somebody has an idea like, oh, I've got a really interesting idea. I wonder if other people think this way. You know, good luck finding them in 1550. Yeah. Well, even even. when we were kids, I'm, I'm a little bit older than you. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe you had one or two friends and, mm, yeah. uh, to talk to, you know, and like if, uh, if you were comfortable enough to even bring it up with them, uh, you know, what are the chances that this one person would have any sort of expertise or even be able to reflect on, you know, how you were feeling? Exactly. Uh, and now you wouldn't even have to blurt it out yourself, right? You could just go to a, a discussion forum that already has uh, a thousand posts on, you know, about people talking about how you feel. Yeah. Google, I am feeling blank. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, I wouldn't have even had the the communication skills. Like, I, I think about so many things that I went through, like middle school, high school. I wouldn't have even had the words to share that with, with somebody else out loud, you know? But... Why would have I uh, have even bothered trying to figure out what those words would need to be? There was nowhere for those questions or those thoughts to go. So now maybe a lot of kids are better at that kind of communication because they know that if they, you know, take the steps to communicate those feelings or needs, they could actually find answers. That just wasn't an option for us. And, yeah, no, that's that's really interesting. Yeah, I mean, if you just think about um, how the internet's going to ruin school, uh, <laughs> that's you know that's that's one of the great reasons there. And I, I already think there's um, you know, it's even from a knowledge perspective, uh, teachers used to have to be the great gateway to information, and that doesn't exist anymore. And yeah. I think people are going to realize that, especially as they they grow up, both both emoting and uh, learning freely online. Yeah. And I really look forward to this day where that uh, more people are realizing that because right now, you know, it's kind of like school does what a lot of like, I I think of this as something like more conspiracy theorist people would say that it's trying to destroy the family, you know, like these progress and I'm not, you know, to a certain extent, I believe this, right. That it's the progressive movement was, Um, at least earlier in the 20th century, about, you know, breaking up family units. But school does that just, you know, by, it's like, it's natural consequence, right? Uh, The family Mm -hmm. experiences school as this enormous part of their lives, right? Every day starts, if you have two or three kids, every day starts thinking about school. Every day ends thinking about school. The kids are in school all the time. It's a a 50-hour-a-week commitment for them. So it's this huge part of their lives over which they have no real meaningful control. Yeah, parents can go to PTA meetings. Kids have nothing like that. They don't even have a way to pretend that they're in control. So the entire family is being, you know, basically crushed in many cases by the school experience. So school is overpowering the family just by the routine itself. Yeah, and they can't see it either. For you know, it's it's such a state of nature. Yeah, that's that, true. It's and, the way it is. You, when, it, it starts to look very ridiculous once you, um, you know, take our, our mindset and and have fully sort of integrated it into your um your worldview. It it just looks more and more school looks more and more ridiculous that that somebody else is making you do so much and something so bad. Yeah. Hey, you know, you just said that, and it reminded me of something that you wrote that I really liked. And it's another one of the arguments, but it perfectly uh, relates to the argument for family. And it was the argument for sleep, sleeping in, and staying up. 
And you said, for school children and their families, some stranger, the superintendent, commands that everyone wake up at the same time. And it's often too early for most people. And because everybody has to get up at the same time, it usually means everyone has to go to bed at basically the same time if one wants a decent chance of getting enough sleep, which almost no teenagers do. Why would a total stranger be able to command you, your children, your spouse, and a couple thousand of your neighbors when to go to bed and when to get up? Plus, it's not uncommon for kids, especially teenagers, to not get enough sleep. Yeah, I've seen hour, like, uh, numbers like nine hours for the average active teenager. And, you know, when I used to talk to kids, they were telling me five, six, sometimes less than five, because a lot of these kids worked, too. Yeah. Um, with home education individuals, not unknown distant superintendents, get to decide when and how much sleep occurs. And kids also have the possibility of having a schedule that kind of lines up with their natural circadian rhythms, which is probably a nice thing for health. Yeah. I mean, isn't it kind of silly that uh, someone, which, you know, me, would have to write that down on a piece of paper? Um, yeah. <laughs> that, that, is, that a stranger should, shouldn't dictate when everybody gets to go to bed and, and wake up. Yeah, um, it's it's you know it's pathetic in a way. Uh, all these people are volunteering to uh, to be commanded like this. But it's, 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 volunteering it's, is an interesting word because it goes back to what you said just a couple minutes ago. In that most people have never even been able to like put their finger on it and say, "Oh, wait a minute, it's this. It's school. <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah. this is what's screwing us all up." <laughs> How did we not see well, it's, it? It's such a huge, <laughs> overpowering part of our lives. Uh, boy, shame on us for missing this. Most people just don't see it, and that's um, one of the reasons why I really hope you get some traction with these uh, 54 arguments. And, um, you know, I did uh, part of my part today, but I'm going to do more to help spread this uh, as far and wide as possible because it's very easy to read through. There's also a podcast. It's very shareable. Uh, people can pick and choose. You know, they can kind of tailor their own argument based on who they might be talking to. A lot of people have to have these conversations with family. You know, what? And yeah. you, like maybe the kind of conversation that you need to have with your neighbor if he ever stops playing Minesweeper with you and actually gets curious about what you're doing because he sees that your family is happy and fulfilled. Thank you so much, Jeff, for coming on. Uh, I really appreciate uh, you writing this and recording it as a podcast and uh, sharing it on School Sucks. Well, thanks so much. This has been a delight. Looking forward to the next session. Mm -hmm.